Well, joining me now from Ankara is Sri Lanka's ambassador to Turkey, Pakir Mohyuddin Amza. Sir, it's a pleasure having you on the Newsmakers. Thank you very much for taking the time. Tell me why you think it's necessary for your country to have a state of emergency. It is important because uh, we have seen the unprecedented uh, violence uh, in our country. And uh, to curb this violence, you need some extra uh, power to our armed forces. We have taken a careful decision after going through every options. We had a decision yesterday in the cabinet, followed by the meeting uh, of the Security Council. There we have decided to uh, have the emergency for a limited period of seven days, and during which we thought we should be able to bring this uh, uh, violence into uh, control. Sir, is incitement happening against the Muslim community? I just want to, first of all, uh, you know, extend or reiterate our sincere sympathies and condolences to the two most valuable lives that we have lost for last one week, one from the Sinhala community, another from the Muslim community. And uh, we also condone, uh, condemn the attack on the uh, attack on the properties and the mosque. And we are doing everything possible to bring this into control. We don't support it. You know, uh, it's a difficult task. We are trying our best mm -hmm. to, to, to control them. Yes, and as we all know, you know, this was all triggered, triggered by an isolated incident. Many would almost term it as road rage, but it has spiraled out of control. The New York Times, in their piece says that President Sirisana's fragile coalition government has been accused of emboldening extremists by failing to hold groups that incite hatred to account. Is that a fair and accurate representation of what's going on in your country, sir? Hatred is, uh, is something that we don't like. Uh, in fact, uh, we all taking every possible uh, action to curb this. Under the emergency regulations, you know, uh, hatred, why, uh, speech also prohibited. We are taking some actions to, to control it, and I'm sure that we will be able to succeed it. And how important is it to you, uh, symbolically especially, that celebrities, especially former cricketers like Sangakara and Jayawadna and so forth, have, have come out on Twitter and have been tweeting for unity and for people not to take the law into their own hands and calling for ethnic unity in your country? It's a very, very, very welcome move because these are the celebrities that uh, we, 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 as we, we consider them as a treasures. And it is very good of them to come at this moment and tell our people. Because I also must flag it at this point of time, Imran, that this is not uh, the incident that is involving uh, the majority of Sri Lankans. Because majority of the Sri Lankan people, both uh, in all communities, the Sinhalese, the Tamils, and the Muslims, are peace-living people. We have been living there for centuries together. And this is only a minority people. And I'm sure that uh, the, the appeal by the, uh, by the celebrities will go in a long way. And this is a wish of all the Sri Lankans uh, in, in our country. Ambassador Pakir Mohyuddin Amza, I thank you very much for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Let's bring in our panel now, and joining us from Colombo is Delante Witanage. He's the chief executive officer of the Sinhalese Buddhist nationalist organization, Bodubala Sena. Also in Colombo, Colombo is businessman Mohammed Hisham. He's the former director of the Halal Accreditation Council of Sri Lanka. And we have human rights activist Ruki Fernando, who joins us from the city of Kandy, where the violence first erupted. Gentlemen, I thank you very much for joining us. Ruki, let me begin with you. We just spoke to Sri Lanka's ambassador to Turkey. He says... We should remember that even though there's a state of emergency for a short period of time, these incidents don't reflect broadly what's going on in Sri Lanka, and these incidents are isolated. Is that fair? Uh, it's certainly not isolated here in Kandy. And if you, the, the road that I came through today, uh, I saw plenty of burnt bicycles, uh, motorbikes, shops. Uh, there were shops that were on fire today around Kandy. And till today, even including the place where I'm staying, people are staying in fear. They, we don't know what will happen tonight. Any mob could break in, and we don't have the assurance that the government, the police, or the army can protect us. 
Who is behind the trouble, Rookie? Uh, well, clearly this seems to be incited by groups that are led by Buddhist monks and uh, thugs. And clearly the, there has been, people have been telling us around Kandy that the police and the special task force have been, been watching by when this violence was happening. So clearly the government has not been able to control it and to take decisive action. And some of the hate speech is very visible, who is responsible on social media. And no action has been taken against them, although the government seems to be trying to clamp down general on freedom of expression and communication by clamping down on uh, social media okay. platforms like WhatsApp, Facebook, etc. Okay, so Delante, we hear Ruki saying that Buddhist monks and what he calls thugs are both inciting and attacking Muslims. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that we uh, are very unfortunate to uh, see this situation in Sri Lanka. I don't think that uh, the, the, uh, whatever the NGOs uh, promoting uh, internationally is not correct. 22nd February, a uh, lorry driver, a Sinhalese Buddhist, attacked by four Muslim three-wheel drivers, and uh, that person got killed uh, by uh, them. And third. Uh, the third March night, he died. As a result of that, certain elements, I don't say that Buddhist monks did it or thugs did it, but some elements. Maybe Buddhist monks were worried about uh, the situation in Sri Lanka, but the way how they interpret is completely wrong. I blame because from 2013, I know about this situation in Sri Lanka, the, uh, people are fear about Muslim extremism because it's a global phenomena, not only from Sri Lanka. But most of Sri Lankan Muslims are innocent people. But unfortunately, US and other governments, UN, funded a large number of NGOs and other organizations in Sri Lanka to build uh, reconciliation, coexistence. But we are worried, what happened to this money? Okay, they so just let me ask you, Delante, because you're talking about very big things about the fear of Muslim extremism. Let me ask you about 27-year-old Abdul Basit, who was basically lynched, burned to death in his own house, when the police were, were nearby. I guess he and his family expected that this would never happen. I want to ask you very clearly, do you in any way we, we, associate we, we, no, him are, with what you call the Muslim fear? No, I, no, I don't think. He is very innocent people. I, I, I told you, you know, in Sri Lanka, more than 99% uh, Muslims are innocent people. We are shocked to see these situations. But unfortunately, what we are blaming that uh, not only government, NGOs who got millions of dollars from the US and other government and other agencies failed to establish uh, reconciliation in this country. Because due to war, due to other reasons, Sri Lanka is a violent country. Although it's a democratic country. So this violence should be addressed properly. It's, it's not violence from uh, all parties. So if it's, it is unfair to only blame, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, Buddhist monks. Okay, okay. So let, let me ask Buddhist Mohammed Hisham. Are very peaceful. Okay. okay, fair enough. So Mohammed Hisham, is it a good point that it is unfair to only blame Buddhist monks when we look at the root causes, or maybe not the root causes, but the trigger of this latest round of violence? <laughs> was the fact that Muslims allegedly killed a Buddhist? I think, Imran, you are very correct. Uh, that question is very po to the point, because uh, Mr. Vitanage mentioned uh, how it started, but I think what he probably uh, uh, knowingly or unknowingly missed out was that uh, what happened was it was not an issue between Muslims and Buddhists. It was three drunkard three-wheel drivers who happened to be Muslims. They ended up having a fight on the street with a lorry driver, and the guy was, uh, and the lorry driver passed away on the third. That was Saturday morning, and until Sunday night, there was no issue. The local temple Buddhist monks, like Rookie said, uh, most of the uh, local community were not violent at all at that time, and local Buddhist monks, Muslim community leaders, and the police, everybody got together, and peace and. Uh, calmness was maintained. But what happened was Mr. Vitanage's organizational head, Jnana Saratero, and then three other very notorious anti-Muslim extremists, they apparently coincidentally happened to go to this funeral out of nowhere on Sunday night, and that ended up in a sp whole set of violences, violence where right. the police arrested 24 people, and these guys so demanded let's ask, that day to be released. Okay, you made, a, you, made a, you made a claim there and an accusation. So, Mr. Witanage, has your organization, along with others, added fuel to the fire? So this is how these people interpret it. Now, uh, 
it's on social media available the way how our uh, leader went to this particular uh, funeral house and everything is there nothing happened like that it, it was uh, uh, you know very clear it's openly done and actually now he is the leader in this country who is promoting uh, if you can uh, see the uh, radio television station and all during this couple of days he was addressing the media and uh, bringing uh, peace into this country rookie if i had to ask you rookie let me let me bring you in here if I had to ask you, what are the root causes of the trouble that we're seeing right now in Sri Lanka? What would you say is the root cause? Well, there's been a very strong uh, dominance of the, the Sinhalese Buddhist uh, community in Sri Lanka. Most of the political leadership uh, has been Sinhalese Buddhist. I think Kandy is a very good example. Kandy is considered a very sacred city for Buddhist in particular. It's a historical city. Uh, this is where we have one of the most sacred and important uh, Buddhist shrines, the Dalda Maligawa. Uh, this is where two of the most top prelates uh, reside the Mahanayaka Theros, the chief prelates, but if they can't control a section of the Buddhist population, if the Buddhist values doesn't prevail and stop them uh, from attacking uh, communities who are minorities, that fundamentally is a root cause. So right. the, that the, the form of Sinhalese Buddhism that we have is a fundamental uh, root cause of this problem. Okay, so Delante, and the inability okay. of government control. Right. Okay, so Delante Witanaga, it's not no, just Rookie saying we, this. Hold on, we, hold on for a second. Let me let me just add something to it, right? We have the International Crisis Group, Alan Keenan, Sri Lanka expert from the International Crisis Group, saying the renewed violence in past months could be related to the growing strength of Raja Paksa's opposition movement. Many say the intercommunal violence is a product of the search for a new enemy to replace the Tamils, unite the Sinhala, and win votes by cultivating a sense of Sinhala Buddhists under siege. That sounds quite scathing. I don't think the International Crisis Group, Delante, has a dog in this fight. I don't think they want to be biased. Tell me what's going on, Delante. No, I don't think uh, you can't blame for this, uh, the Buddhist, as uh, many says, many understand that it's a very peaceful country. And uh, these incidents happen uh, and we should stop this. There is no argument about it. And we are fighting uh, to stop this. Even when the incident took place, we took all measures in order to not spread. Even today, the Venerable Nyanasar Tero, he was supposed to fly to Japan, but he stopped that fly, uh, flight and he's staying in Sri Lanka and made a number of statements in order to reduce this violence. Now, what I'm trying to say is that you can't blame Buddhism or Buddhist monks for this. Now, for example, what is happening uh, in the uh, Middle East? Can you uh, blame Islam for, uh, but, for this? But that I, was not suggested uh, by either Ruki or the International Crisis Group, nor myself in the question. What we're saying is Sri Lanka, at the moment, according to these experts, seems to be a country that promotes the Sinhala at the expense of minorities. Nobody's blamed Buddhism for anything. So, again... Are they making it up or do they have Buddhist a... Monks, because, okay. because when you say Buddhist monks behind this, it's completely wrong. If you look at it, maybe two or three Buddhist monks can do that. Okay. Rookie, you want to but respond not, to that? Not, uh, not, not a large number of Buddhist monks are against this. So, but then why is it that the other Buddhist monks and the other Buddhist people are not uh, coming forward to stand against it? Now, candy has been burning. So, the surrounding they, areas I, have I, been they, burning. They, Most people have been fleeing their homes they, and they're they, not able they, to stay they, in their homes. So why isn't no, the, the you, large should, uh, you should you should you should you should check the uh, today's media how many Buddhist monks spoke openly and uh, uh, regret about these situations and uh, condemn these situations and ask people to be uh, uh, live peacefully. Okay. I so, think there are so Rookie feels it's not enough. Can I? Okay. Also to okay. Hold on. Rookie this. Rookie feels it's not enough. Delante is saying they are doing it, but Delante, just for the record, nobody is accusing Buddhism of anything on this program. That's make that fundamentally uh, clear. Um, during the show. Mohammed, I want you to have a listen to the president, President Sirisena. Have a little listen to what the president had to say. I condemn all the violent incidents that have taken place. Not only do I condemn the violence, I have also instructed the police to take maximum action against individuals, organizations and or groups involved in those violent acts. So, Mohammed Hisham, isn't that strong leadership? Isn't that acceptable to you? He's condemned the violence, he's condemned the incitement, and they want to grab a hold of this. I think the president's condemnation is correct. And what people are asking on the ground is now the law enforcement authorities to 
do the right thing because there has been skirmishes and others where mobs have been roaming around freely in isolated uh, locations and pockets of Muslim areas despite the curfew for the last couple of days. So that is what people are asking. President is correct in condemning. I think the law enforcement has to follow up that and make sure the law is implemented. And Imran, just give me a moment on what Dilanta. I think I agree with Dilanta on one point. Majority of the Buddhist monks have been condemning this, and it's not reflective of the Buddhist for sure. But uh, at the same time, people like who are affiliated to Dilanta's organization, I, I may not necessarily mention, but Ampiti, Sumana, to all the other people, uh, theros, they are the ones who have instigated the whole thing. And because this violence did not start from local people, local community was peaceful, local monks were peaceful. It started from busloads of people coming from Baticolo to Gaul to Mathare, going there and uh, mobilizing and then creating mobs. And that's how the bloodshed started. This is exactly how Aludgama violence happened for several years ago. And I think that also, although the BBS has been denying, I'm not pointing the finger only at BBS here, because there are enough and more evidences as to who instigated, because the local community was calm for 40 hours. The last eight or 12 hours before the funeral was taken, these outsiders went and uh, capitalized on this. Because partly the president did con uh, condemn the issues uh, uh, Imran, but partly we had to also point a finger at the government at some point because they have not been strict enough about hate speech and spreading of hatred uh, un under the guise of nationalism, as some of these groups claim to be. And I think they had a, they were soft peddling with it, and now it has come mm -hmm. to a point. It's a shame on the whole country and a majority of beast loving Buddhist, Muslims, Tamils, and everybody. Dilanse? Yes, I believe that we can debate about this and we can find faults with others. But what is important today is to get uh, this emergency lift as soon as possible and to bring it to normalcy. And I believe uh, we have to change our approaches, uh, the government approaches and NGO approaches. And we have to b have new approaches to build trust between Sinhalese, Buddhists and Tamils and all people and build this nation again. I think that is uh, what we should that trust today. will not be built when your allies go on asking about uh, uh, trying to uh, marginalize and claiming Sri Lanka to be a single uh, Buddhist country. It's a, so I we, think we have to cherish the diversity. Never, it's a country for everybody. No, no. No, because we have to understand that we, we it, it was a Buddhist, single Buddhist country, single Buddhist country. Because now, if you say that some uh, Pakistan or uh, Bangladesh is an Islamic country. But there are Buddhists living. No, so let us talk about Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan Sri... constitution does no, not no, say no. it is a single Buddhist country. It's a Buddhist majority no. country where every other no. community but, but where the, where has the, equal where rights. Where now, 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 look at You have a 10% uh, population. You have more than 9,000 9, uh, mosques in your country. But in a uh, number of uh, temples. Now, Every freedom is there for Muslims and all other people. But Sri Lanka was traditionally a single Buddhist country. So why don't accept that? No, I don't but agree with mean... that. I say it's a single Buddhist majority country where every community, every religion has equal rights. That's so what our we... constitution so says, we... Dilanta. We... You can have we... your own interpretation. So say also... I think this is no. where no, no, no. you have no, no. created no, no. this sense of that... fear mongering among the communities I, I about... where you I have said that Muslims and the Tamils it's... are taking over the country and the, the mobs have been mobilized. No. I think that's what we have to stop. We, we never. I, I don't think Tamils or single uh, Muslims can take over this country. I don't think that. And single, we were saying I'm that happy that you are saying uh, that. Uh, yeah. Our priority is given to single Buddhist, not by uh, what you call uh, single but it's given by the British. And uh, it is no, given I'm by the British about people. The constitution, you and uh, me okay. are uh, following okay, as I think, a, uh, okay, the constitution. Even in the, in the second moment, I, just wanna, I wanna jump in here because, okay, okay this is interesting. Listen, I wanna get you both back on the program again to debate whether that constitution needs to change and the very fundamentals of what it means to be Sri Lankan. For the moment, we're out of time. I want to give Rookie 20 seconds, Rookie, if you had to advise the leadership to do anything right now, what would you advise them to do? Uh, we should arrest all the perpetrators where, uh, who are clearly implicated by video evidence and eyewitness accounts, not only in relation to the incidents in Kandy and Ampara in the last few weeks, but also many, many years, including the leader of the Dilanthas organization, who was in courts today. He has summoned by courts to answer uh, court charges against threats he had made against the lady whose husband had disappeared. So unless and until the government takes decisive action to hold those accountable and to step in decisively mm -hmm. when mobs are rampaging the streets, we can't build reconciliation. Minorities won't feel safe. Okay, Rookie Fernando, Delante Wittanage and Mohammed Hisham.
I thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers.